Oh, hello, and welcome to Hooping Live. Um, I'll be opening the show today. I'm Bryant, and I have Claire and Audrey here as our panel of Hoopers. Um, like always, if you're new to the show, um, you can always comment down on the live chat, and you have to be using um, your computer to, in order to do that. Um, just comment down your questions about hooping, life, or anything you want, and we'll read it live and answer your questions about hooping. So um, if you're just settling in, grab a cup of tea and, or water or maybe coffee and sit back and enjoy the show. Um, today we have Claire today um, giving her a little segment on hooping news. So Claire, would you like to share what you found this week? Sure. I found two news stories that I thought were interesting to share with you this week. The first one is um, for, from Alaska, which I found on the Alaska Dispatch News page. It, the article is called, World Champion Hoop Dancer to Perform at Celebration in Anchorage. It was written on April 21st, and it actually happened on April 23rd and April 24th, so it was very recent. Uh, it was the largest intertribal gathering in Alaska, which I thought was interesting because Alaska is a very big state, and if it's the largest one, how many others are there? Um, it was the sixth annual Ida Ina gathering, and the people who were there were the Native American performers and the seven-time Hoop World Champion, Derek Suwaima, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, Davis. Uh, and the reason that they do this is to preserve and protect their traditional culture. The reason I, th I like this and I thought it was interesting is because I remember the first time I was on Hooping Live, I talked about the history of it. And I remember that the Native Americans twirled around their hoop to show the circle of life. I know that another person of dance, the grass dance, which is the oldest surviving tribal dance, or one of them. Um, and I thought that was interesting because I'm learning about that uh, in social studies and how uh, the Seminole and Creek and all the different Native Americans did that dance when they came together. Um, a little personal thing that relates to this is that um, my cousin Anna married a Seminole, uh, Patrick, uh, and when they found out that I hoop, they invited me to go and see their annual hoop festival, which is next year. The second story I have uh, for news is um, called Counseling Center Illuminates Mental Health Awareness Fire up the night on April 11th at the Keene State College in New Hampshire. Their slogan is, hope matters, share hope, save a life. To get people to come there, they had hula hoops uh, and hoop dancing so for entertainment. And at the end, they ended it with fire dancing to symbolize coming out of the darkness uh, and the, and, or sadness um, as the fire, as the light to guide the way. Um, hooping brings hope, joy, and energy. So keep hooping, it keeps you happy. And that's the news. Oh, and look, Audrey is back. Oh, wait, never mind. Um, so that was really great, Claire. Um, you're learning so much, actually, really interesting stuff in social studies. Um, in my social studies class, I'm learning about European history, and my AP test is in two weeks, so <laughs> good luck to me. So it's very interesting. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and Audrey's finally back. Yay! All right. Hey, guys. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Claire, you just sounded so mature just now like you were I, I didn't even know if that was you talking for a second I was very confused um, uh, sorry I, I just kind of mute everyone because I'm hearing an echo so am I good can everyone see and hear me okay awesome sauce okay guys 
Sorry about that lateness, the lateness, and sorry about last week. I know that I came in on a phone call because um, a fiery explosion of doom happened outside of my house. It wasn't that dramatic, but it was scary. Um, I I don't know if the, I can show you guys like a video of it, but as I told you, if you guys heard the story, I pretty much saw the fire. I'm like pulling up. I'm already late for the show. If you guys didn't hear this before, I'm late for the show, so I'm running, and I'm like, just have Brian start the show. I'm going to be late. And I pull up, and I saw a fire truck come in, and like I've said before, it's like you see, I don't know if you guys do this, but you see a, an ambulance or a fire truck, and you say, oh, God, I hope that's not for someone that I know or love. And it's, oh, it's rants in my house. So I, I literally am now made fun of for being the girl that was running through the parking lot screaming, save the animals. And I wish I was kidding when I told you that. I jumped out of my car, and I was wearing my J's, my slip-on J flip-like slides, and they, like, flew off, and I'm, like, sprinting across my parking lot. And I'm thinking, okay, get your... <laughs> I have, like, this Vera Bradley... Um, old duffel bag. I'm like, I'm just going to throw Shocker in it because I couldn't remember where his carrying case was. I'm just going to throw Shocker in it, grab a few things, I'm just going to run out of the house and everything's going to burn down. Well, I was being dramatic because nothing was going to burn down. But I was just freaking out and uh, I wanted to say the animals and not the humans and that might be a problem. But anyway, I'm okay now. I'm all right. I am wounded, just so you know, to give you guys a little bit of an update. Do not fear. Not only is bug season here, but I volunteer at a cat shelter called Cat Depot, which is where I got that little booger. And I was playing with a cat that bit me and scratched me a lot. Um, and they did, unfortunately, get infected a little bit, but... I've been learning a lot about cats lately, and the way they act, and why they act the way they act. This is a show about hooping, not cats. But anyway, um, why I wanted to say it, because it was a, it's a Taylor Swift-related thing. There are two cats. Um, I helped close up. When I volunteer, I help close up. We do the treats. We get all the cats inside, um, because they have a little kitty door where they can go in and outside in a safe, caged environment. Cat Depot is great. Donate. And this is what my goal is. So let me see. All right, we have viewers. So this is what I wanted to say to you guys, and this is what I want to try to do. So I know that a lot of stars or celebrities can go visit and make donations to certain shelters or whatever. So I go, and there's usually not a lot of kittens at these cat shelters, because everyone wants the kitten. And that's why I got Chakra, who was a teenage cat. He wasn't quite a kitten, even though I wanted a kitten. You know, I, I was like, you know what, everyone gets the kittens. I know they'll be adopted. I want to get a cat that's still small, but whatever. So I get Chakra, and he ends up being my perfect little angel. Anyway, there are two kittens there right now that are sisters, and... The first one's name is Taylor, and the other one's name is Swift. And we all know how much Taylor Swift loves kittens, so I take a photo of little Taylor and Swift sister cats and take photos of their information, and this is what my goal is, and you guys have to help me with this with the comments down below. The live chat does not post afterwards, but... We, got, we have to figure something out. We all have to work together. Let's get these photos. I'm going to go back tomorrow unless they've been, I mean, adopted or not. I think it would be so cool to show that they have, you know, in Sarasota, there's this place called Cat Depot that microchips takes care of all of these cats. It's a great place. I mean, this place is literally, I just lay there and, like, roll in cats. It's great. I go there and, like, cry, and they're like, oh, Audrey's here again crying, and, like, I, I'm not kidding. And uh, I go there weeping, and I'll just, like, lay there, and the kittens, like, walk all over me. I'm fine. Anyway, so I would thought it would be cool if we posted the photos of Taylor and Swift and their little, you know, bios and try to get Taylor's attention. 
and see if she would want to maybe donate to this great, great cat shelter. What do you guys think? Yay, nay? Yeah, I'm seeing some yays. I'm seeing some positive. Oh, it's so weird to see Craig over in, like, a different area. Back in his homestead. Anyway, so back to not cat stuff. Thank you, Bryant, for doing the beginning of the show. And if you guys don't know, my name is Audrey. Audrey Shear, and I am usually the host of the show, but now we have um, Bryant, who is being amazing and doing awesome work, and Claire, who is just rocking it with the hooping news. And I am going to look over here. Let's see. Craig is back in his hometown. Or is it your hometown, Craig? Actually, a Florida resident legally. From what part? Uh, well, I'm a Florida, Florida resident, resident, but I just got right back up here. Okay. Well, Craig's gone, and it makes me very sad, but it's all right. Um, I'll get over it. Are you ready for the comment on the um, I am. I'm going to do, hold on, let me look. I love this, that you've, like, finally, like, let, like, he puts out a little schedule, because if you guys are viewers of the show weekly, you know that I am very sporadic with what happens, and that's why I have people like Bryant, Claire, and Craig to keep me, uh, honed down. All right, so we're going to do comment of the week. Let's see. So comment of the week is from, is it showing... Okay. Yeah, yeah. They can all host. Okay, so this is um, the. I'm confused what I'm looking at here. There's a lot two of them. Words. Two of them there, side by side. Am I. Okay, uh, so we have. Oh, okay, see so what you're doing. So we have a comment from Mercedes Edwards saying, My all time favorite Hooper in the universe. I just love her so much. She's. The first Hooper I ever watched on YouTube who inspired me to pursue my path to hoop dance. And then posted The Beauty of Hoop Dance by Audrey Sheeran 4K. Aww. And uh, Mercedes also said, after Craig said, thank you so much for the share and the kind words. Audrey Sheeran loves to hear feedback like this, which is true. Hopefully you can join the live show sometime on Monday nights, which is true. I would love to have some of the um, viewers come on the show. I mean... Bryant is a perfect example of this, someone who is, you know, uh, someone who really shows a lot of passion for the show, and they end up getting on the show. I don't know how it works. The universe just makes it happen, and then we have someone like Claire, who I was actually talking about today, which I'll, I'll tell that story in a little bit after we get through this, but uh, Claire, I was talking about you today, um, and your shirts. Okay, so Mercedes also said, yes, it's, I will most definitely have to do that. I always watch your videos on YouTube. When I start to feel like I'm hitting a rut in my hoop journey and watching her always motivates me to pick up my hoop and push past it. You know, that's a really great compliment because I'm sure, as most hoopers know, when you get to that plateau and you feel like either, for myself, I felt either at a plateau where not even at this point where there's nothing left to learn, but just that there's too much to learn and that I don't even know where to go at this point. Like, am I supposed to be doing these crazy wedgies? Like, what, what am I supposed to do to make everyone happy? It, it, everyone's not, literally Claire and Brian are nodding at, at me right now because I know that there has to be a lot of you out there saying the same thing. Like, it's like, what like what am I supposed to be doing there that's going to, like, not only... Which, you know, views really do help get the show going and get income and people coming in and watching and getting things out to you, like shirts and stuff. So views are very important, and finding people that we can relate to can be tough, especially when there's all these crazy tricks and there's all these crazy different kinds of hoopers and we're all just trying to, like, find the one that we relate to, which is why I try to have a wide variety on Hooping Live. So, Audrey, I have to tell you, Mercedes is watching now live. <gasps> oh, girl. <laughs> I like that. Hey, Mercedes. Thanks for the comment. You're a sweet girl. Anyway, 
So Mercedes is making a really good point here, you guys. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of hooper you are. If you're a trick kind of hooper, if you're a 22-inch quick whipper snapper of a hooper, if you're a, a, a really big hoop that likes to go nice and slow and saucy or whatever, whatever you want to do, do it. And please don't feel pressured to be with the trends of hooping because lucky for us in this community of hoop dance, there's really, there, there are trends, but it's almost like the community has killed, or at least the community that I am around, like Baxter, Bryant, Claire, Tiana, Brecken, you know, and we've kind of try, we're trying to kill this cliche of trying to have a popularity of what's cool and what's not, and instead finding the core of your inner hooper, and in the end, that's what's cool because I love the, some of the tricks people are doing lately. It's great, I do. But if I'm going to be straight up honest, if I look at a bunch of videos and everyone is just doing the same kind of moves and not and maybe they're new hoopers so they're doing that but they just it, it's kind of like wearing the same kind of clothes it's cool but it eventually gets old and like I was saying with hooping what's so beautiful about it is that we have this soul and we have this inner dancer that we can make this wedgie that can just be very normal, because I'm not a big wedgie gal. <laughs> Sorry, that, who named it that? Come on. Uh, anyway, I'm going to make a hoop trick, and I'm going to name it a wedgie. What's the next one, a camel toe? I don't know. Um, no, and, I know there's a second one. I know, and I'm on a rant. Anyway, what I'm saying is, like, guys, like, don't feel like, if you do feel this way, you can take my advice or not. But personally, I don't let myself get hung up on what's trendy. If you guys tell me, hey, can you teach us how to do this move, Claire, Bryant, and I will do the best we can to look up this move, learn how to do it, and explain it to the best of our abilities in all of our different styles. But just know that what makes your hooping special and stand out is when you put your into it because I mean that's just what it is it's just like when you when I was like in art class and they said paint this apple and everyone had the ability to paint the apple how they saw said apple oh my god I'm getting to a rant all right we're gonna go to <laughs> all right second comment is from okay closer to the screen here girl okay Elsa loves cookies. She probably actually hates them. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Elsa uh, Mandy Hoops. I don't know which I'm a comment. I don't know who. Okay, it's, yeah. It's our, our Elsa Loves Cookies. Craig, dear Craig, thank you for your nice comment. I know and love your show Hooping Live. I I hope I hooped only for about two years. I love I've hooped only for about two years. I love it and want to improve my hooping. Audrey is my biggest inspiration. She's my, she is the best hooper ever. Greetings from Germany to you both. Love, Maggie. Well, danke schön. Uh, du bist die Beste. Um, that's awesome. I love when uh, people from Germany talk to me. If you guys do know, um, uh, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. So if you are a German hoop tanza. By the way, Brian has some information to add on that particular Oh, book. well, I, that's too bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what do you have to add, babe? So yeah, um, I was you know watching you know one of your old videos, you know. Um, but anyways, I came across this one video. Um, actually, that same video um, from Mandy Hoops. Um, that same girl also loved cupca um, cookies, and I saw her video, and I was all like, "Oh, this song is um, the same song that Audrey used in the top ten trick hooping video." And um, 
I thought it was really cool because it reminded me because she was inspired by Audrey as as same as I was, and I thought it was really cool. And including that um, video, I would like to share the photo of the day, um, which um, also reminded me of that top ten hooping tricks video, which is right here. Yeah, um, I just feel like that video, the top ten hooping tricks video, has been like really prominent in my life because it taught me how to hoop dance, and it's the basis that I brought my hoop dance to be on top of, to grow on top of. And I feel like this week, um, everything kept on relating back to that video and how I started learning how to hoop dance. That, and I thought that was really cool. And including to uh, Audrey, you know, because she can speak German, um, I can actually speak um, Spanish and uh, Japanese, um, which is really cool. Um, I'm not really good at Japanese, though, but my Spanish is pretty OK. And yeah, I'm actually going to do a demo right now. and. Please enjoy, and if you see anything that I do, please comment down on the live chat, and I'll try to explain it to the best of my ability. <laughs> That is such a cool hoop. I want one of those so badly. Oh my gosh, that stupid microphone. Um, that was amazing, Brian. I love watching you. Every time you... Did you hurt yourself? You'll get a little tune to it? No? Okay. Um, awesome. Like, <laughs> like Brian said, it's such a cool hoop. Um, if you guys see him do anything in particular that you really like, comment down below in the chat, and we'll try to teach you to the best of our ability. And of course, you can comment whatever you like. And um, I will, hold on, let me see here. We did a comment and we did a picture of the week. Okay, well, thank you, Brian, by the way, for that picture of the week. I know that that, <laughs> um, that that video has been a very popular one on my channel. And it's interesting that when I made that video, or when Craig actually made it, I was kind of, like, thrown off by it. I'm like, oh, my God, like, it's just going to be, like, a generic video, like, top this hooping video and I kind of thought it was gonna honestly what I felt was it was gonna go against the grain is that the word I'm trying to say go against the grain of what hoop dance is which is that spiritual and you know whatever thing which it is and I realized that I it can be that and it can be top tens it can be quick clips. It can be what Craig has helped produce with many hoopers, including myself, to help get videos out there to teach. Because in the long run, it's about teaching each other how to hoop and how to start hooping. So if one video inspires someone to hoop, then that's awesome. If someone types in hoop dance and sees my video and watches it and is like, oh, well, I don't get what's going on and sees another video and clicks on it and that's a video that makes them start hooping and it's not me, that's great. At least somehow they got to that place to be a hoop dancer and that's all that matters and what is beautiful and what is important and that's why I love Bryant and I love Craig and Claire and all of you viewers because you've taken the time out of your lives 
to not only watch the show, but to learn, grow, create, and, you know, help push this idea of breaking boundaries and stereotypes of what a hoop dancer is, which a lot of people see as like a hippie kid or whatever. It's like, it does not matter who you are. Anyone can be a hoop dancer. It doesn't matter if you're 10 and you have a really cool hair and an awesome smile, or you are, you know, 84 and have a really cool headband and are a great salsa dancing hooper. I have seen it, and it is real. Anyway, or you're across the country and you don't know any other hoopers and you've found a community online and somehow become a part of that community, Bryant. And also, you know, we can uh, give a big thank you to Craig because technically he's the one that started this show. And I think that we need to do something soon to really show our appreciation to Craig because I had my channel and he's the one that said, he's the one that pretty much made Hooping Live. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And it sounds kind of weird, but I'll do it. And now look at it. Everyone, like we have thousands of viewers that love it and have learned and, I don't know, all right, I'm getting emotional. Anyway, um, Claire, would you be ever so kind to do a demo and show everyone your lovely flow? Sure, if you see anything that I do that you want to learn, um, comment down below and I'll do my best to show. That is the magical and wonderful Claire. Um, if you guys are watching her for the first time, then yes, your mind has just been blown. And before I do my little demo, I will tell a quick story. I know I'm in a story mood kind of today, but I've had a very kind of emotional day. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in my life that's changing, such as like my mom getting married and whatnot, which is a big thing for um, my family, and so you know, it's just kind of one of those days that there's a lot of emotions coming in, so I'm putting that out there, so deal with it. Anyway, so I'm at this beautiful little spot in Sarasota, and it's a tiki bar, and I am having a conversation with my dad, and we start talking about artists and there's a man sitting next to us who says, oh, I have to mute Craig. Okay, there we go. Um, I have a, or an, an eight-year-old daughter who, who loves to hula hoop. And he said she makes me stand there and watch her and count every time it goes around and around. And I was like, well, 
does she do more than that? Does she lift the hoop up or do anything? And he goes, no, she just really loves to hula hoop. It's just like she's obsessed with it. So I pulled up Hooping Live and showed him a video of um, myself dancing. And he goes, wow, well, you know, that looks, that's a lot more than what she does. Or, you know, which that you do a lot more than what she does. And I said, well, here's the thing. This is why I showed you this. Now look at this. And I pulled up the video of Claire and I said, this girl is 10 years old. We shot this right over there. And she is incredible. And showed him the, the video of Claire hoop dancing. And he wrote down the name and is, you know, I said, you know, if you, it's a show that is any age can watch. And if you want to supervise the online viewing, you can. But there's this incredible 10 year old that does an awesome segment of the show and teaches and is great so please like if your daughter is fine has this passion for hooping let it grow like let it grow um so hopefully you know we'll maybe have a well an eight-year-old that can uh, come on and claire can be a little mentor which would be super cool anyway okay so moving forward before we get to some of these comments my week like i said emotional whatever I um, have a lot going on and going through a lot of emails. I looked at my phone and, oh, by the way, I, I apologize about these bites. Like I said, I picking up cats that aren't very happy is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Anyway, I have 12,000, where is it? 12,352 12, emails that I have to go through. So, anyway, so that's kind of what my week has been like, is trying to get my life sorted and together. But I have been hooping in my head and hooping a little bit, so I'll go ahead and do a quick demo. So, one, two, Oh, yeah, you love those lights, don't you, buddy? All right. Does that look good? Feels good. All right. <laughs> meant to do that no I didn't alright so that's going to be my demo Is <laughs> I swear I'm graceful sometimes um <laughs> Craig so anyway that's that and a bag of potato chips so let's see here so that's been my week and viewer live comments. All right, so let's get to some of these comments because you guys are commenting on on this stuff for sure. It's so weird having. Um, actually, I need to go to the live thing right now. I'm not on there yet. Oh, don't make a sound. Okay, here we go. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so we have live comments. We have a comment from. Kristen Abbott says, my AP U.S. history test is next Friday. We still have three more chapters to cover. Needless to say, I'll be making a hooping video to celebrate as soon as the test is over. I would, too. I have not been in school. Is that like a thing that you guys do, Bryant, Claire? Bryant, do you celebrate this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yep, definitely. Every day after a test, you know, I'm going to get my hoop. I'm just going to celebrate. Oh, and by the way, um, I actually have um, 12,416 emails that are unread. 
<laughs> Make you buy like 400. <laughs> Wait, how much do you have? Wait, I think you're muted. <laughs> you're muted. Wait, what? what? Oh, oh, okay, I see how it is. Can you is that 12,000? No, it's a little bit bright. Just say the number. Just say the number. It says one, two, three, five, two. Well, mine says one, two, four, um, six, two. <laughs> well, you know what? I went through like a hundred of them the other day, and most of them were Pottery Barn. So, <laughs> no, you're just like me. And Claire's like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I have two emails. <laughs> 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 oh my god. I love you guys so much. And then Craig's over there going like, Audrey, get your dang emails read. Alright, good luck, Kristen. Um, let's see, those are... My cup just made a sound at me. Yes, Siasi cup. Okay, are you doing great, Audrey? Yes, I'm on the comments. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so Mo Mohammed, that's what we're gonna call you because I'm not gonna try to even do that name, says, Beautiful, I miss your eyes so much. Thank you. That's so sweet. I I <clears throat> If you guys see anything that we did in any of our demos, please feel free to ask, and we are happy to teach you. All right, so I don't know what that means. Can let me see. All right, can you guys all see the chat? Like, are you all able to like see the chat together? You got okay, so they know what's they know what's happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Jennifer Hart says, I think it's a great idea. I'm sure she'll think it's cool. Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful idea. We have wonderful ideas. Mercedes, oh my god, that's me. I love it. Okay, we're very much behind. I'm from Morocco, and I like what do you do? I watch you live in YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I'm dying right now, says Mercedes. I, well, I just love you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I love you too, and you're awesome. And I'm sorry, this is done. <laughs> oh, what is happening? Oh, this live chat thing. YouTube is trying. Okay, Jennifer Hart says, when I'm doing a lasso, I find my, I find that my 100 psi hoop is leaving bruises on my hands. Should I be using a lighter hoop if there is one, or am I maybe doing it wrong if that's possible? All right, when I'm doing a lasso. Okay, so it depends on, Brian, so it depends on how you're doing a lasso. Yes, a lighter hoop will help, and um, may, I, may I have this? Thank you. Um, it depends on what you're doing. There's a few ways to do lassos, but in the end, hoopers are going to be bruised. It doesn't matter how great of a hooper you are. In the end, we all get bruises somehow. But when you're doing a lasso, I kind of like to really, I know I emphasize this all the time on when I talk about chest hooping and doing that kind of like rocking motion. I also like to do that with the lasso, kind of almost like pushing. Yeah, see Bryant's mine as well. It's like that pushing the hand around. So... I'm kind of almost making a circle with my hand, almost like my hand is like my hips when I hula hoop. And so when I make a lasso, I'm not pushing back and forth. Instead, I'm making that kind of hula hooping kind of motion, maybe even grab the hoop and kind of try different ways. Move up and down your hand into your palm, up to your fingers. See what feels comfortable and kind of make it more of a, um, instead of making your arm and your hand do the move, try to make it your body doing the move. So this is my arm and my hand doing the move. 
and yes, I can feel I can feel that a lot. Like there is a lot of um, it's just it's a, it's a lot of feeling on my. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's intense. But see, my the rest of my body is not moving. So now if I ow, that actually really does hurt. You must be getting bruises. I don't like that. Okay. So then if I do it instead and I use my body and I kind of do that back and forth thing and I'm using my body and my body weight to do the lasso, it's making it a lot easier. So I'm shifting my weight and it's letting the hoop spin around my hand instead of staying in one spot and pushing it. I'm almost making it like my hand is a hula hoop. And it's cool because you can really like have fun with it without worrying about, I don't know, hurting your hand. But in the in the scheme of everything, I don't know if that's the right thing to say, heavier hoops do bruise easier. I mean, <laughs> that's just how it is. Um, when you when I first started hooping, I had like a 44 inch, one inch, you know, the, the, the biggest hoop ever. And like I said, people thought I was being abused because I was just bruised all around my body. Um, Brian, do you have any tips on that? Actually, I do. All right. <laughs> so my tips, um, yes, I actually think moving your body and incorporating it, incorporate incorporating your body um, with the lasso, the active, very good idea. Um, I do that a lot too. Another tip is. Um, walking in a circle while doing it because it slows down the um, revelations per second um, that your hoop spins around in, which in turn um, lowers the amount of force each revelation gives to your hand. For example, I'll do it right now on my knees, which will be pretty hard. But yeah, as you can see, the hoop is spinning slower as I walk in a circle or kneel in a circle. So yeah, that's another tip for bruising hands. And yeah, actually, people thought I was getting bullied um, when I started hooping. And the worst part is, is that I was swimming during the time, so my bruises were all shown. They were like, oh my gosh, Brian, are you being bullied? I'm all like, nah, it's just the hoop. Ouch. Nah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've had the same things. Um, what about you, Claire? on the spot. I just, sometimes I turn around with it and to slow down the hoop, but um, sometimes I just grip onto it. If like it, I start going too fast, I grip onto it so it slows down. Claire, you can talk in. Get the mic close to your mouth. I think she sounds great. Oh, well, I guess it's a little quiet, but she sounds great. So um, if you just grab it, if it starts going too quickly, it might, um, it will slow it down and uh, raise your hand less. Yeah. No, I. Okay, I'm shit. <laughs> just like that. So yeah, see how she's going fast and grabbing the hoop and slowing it down. It's exactly what she's trying to talk about. Yeah, that's great. And see how she's shifting her body back and forth? I feel like I'm doing like an infomercial or something weird like that. I don't know. And, and, I, and I do the same thing. I, I'm also the um, grabber of the hooper. Of the, that sounded so bad. The, I grab the hoop a lot when I and spinning it because it just allows for more control. So hopefully that helps. We went way too in depth with that, but you know what? No, you know, because it's odds. Claire's Bryant's super short show. All right, good job, brother. Uh, Muhammad says good job, brother. Bryant. Kristen Abbott says that hula hoop is my new favorite shade of blue. Oh my god, it is mine too. I want that hoop so bad. Brian has like the coolest hoop in the world. Like at first, like everyone's like, oh, I want the hoop Audrey has, and now it's like, oh, I want the hoop Brian has, and it's like my hoop. Like I found it like crying the other day. I was like, sorry, buddy, we'll work on it. 
<laughs> just kidding. But no, it's a, it is, it's a really cool hoop, and I really do want one like it. It's, and the way that Brian has, like, been experimenting with, like, all the color and stuff, and, or light, to reflect the color, that boy is a genius. All right, that was so good, Brian, says Jennifer Hart. Um, Tyler Durden says, hello, Audrey. Hello, Tyler. Kristen Avat says, I have been trying to inspire kids at five below to hula hoop. My manager says I'll have to make sure I'm working next time we have sidewalk chalk party with kids so I can teach them to hula hoop. Absolutely. That's what I like to do. Um, in my storage unit, I have a bunch of hoops that are just black, um, PSI hoops that are different sizes and shapes. And I'll just put some tape on them, not a lot, not obviously not sparkle tape that will cut you up and stuff, but I'll just do some sort of like gaffer's tape around it, and I'll have different sizes and weights, and I call it my love bundle. And um, I'll have my bundle of hoops, which is the one where it's they're my LEDs, they're my special hoops, they're not for other people to use. And then I'll bring my bundle of hoops for other people to use that are for any size of, making sure I'm not muted, of kids because, um, you know, that's how it worked. And Bonnie Brown taught me that. And I talked about this recently, but I went to a party where there, was, there were kids and I thought, oh, I don't need to go to the storage unit and get my, my practice bundle. Like, the kids will respect the hoops. No. No, they didn't. No, didn't happen. I went out there, and if you guys understand what I'm saying, they had all my tape tubes. They're actually right there, and they're going like this, and they're like slamming them on the ground. And I walk out, and I'm like, I'm like, give me, give me the hula hoop, give me the hula hoop. And then the parents are like, why are you trying to take a hula hoop away from a child? It's a child's toy. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm going to go to jail over a hula hoop. I'm just kidding. But now pretty much what my point is to have, if you're going to do something where, like what she said, teach something, have hoops that are for other people to use that you feel comfortable knowing they're going to probably be destroyed and or scraped up in some way, and then have your special bundle and put a padlock around it. I'm not kidding you, I have a padlock. Actually, it's a um, bike. It's a bike thing. I don't know why I just did that. It's a bike bike lock. And um, that's what I do because I've had an LED stolen from me. I've had four other hula hoops that were colored polypros that Beth Lavender, both my colored polypros from Beth Lavender were stolen. One of my mercury hoops were stolen. And I've, I've just had so many hoops stolen from me from letting people borrowing them. And then you have people come up and not, they're like, oh, my child loves your light up hula hoop. Let them play with it. Or they ask to play with it. And it, like I've said before, it makes you kind of feel like a jerk saying, sorry, this is a $400 hula hoop or whatever, $100 hula hoop, whatever. $100 is a lot of money. $400 is a lot of money. If you're going to, either way, for someone, that's a lot of money. And so if someone's, you know, saved a bunch of money for a $100 mood hoop versus, like, waited even longer to save up even more and wait even longer to finally get, like, a, an atomic hoop or something that's crazy, that's going to be your baby. That's going to be something you want to keep sacred and not get around sand. I'm sure Claire kind of can feel me on that one. Sand can really make a hoop have a bad life. Um, but just, that's just my word of advice. Claire, do you have any, because um, I know you go to the beach a lot, did you want to maybe say something about hoops and sharing hoops or if you've even had to deal with that? I don't really like uh, watch the people to make sure that they're not like breaking them in half. And like doing that thing with them because people have tried to do that before. Um, so 
I just like watch them if I see them like going like this and trying to rip it apart. <laughs> I like go to them and I say, no breaking <laughs> Oh my god, no, it's the worst. You see them, and, and that was one of the things that the kids were doing at this party that I brought my hoops to. And now this hoop is pretty much ruined, but I go out, and the kid is doing... Let me, hold on, let me make you guys bigger to see if I can show y'all. I go out there, and I'm gone for two seconds, I promise you. And I go out there, and this kid is just going like this, and doing it way harder, and just smashing the hoop. And seeing him, he was, oh my god, I mean, it was horrible. And then they were playing the game that if they threw a hoop really, really high in the air, and then they would, like, kick it, and it would, like, light, like, it was watching, like, the sky fall. I'm just thinking, like, oh my god, this is, this is, this is what the end of the world looks like. Anyway, thank you, Claire, for making me feel not so crazy. Okay, so let's get through a few more comments before the end of the show. Um, Jennifer Hart says, I love it. Claire smiles the whole time. And yes, she does, and that is why we love her. Oh, let's go back up. Um, Becca. D says, thank you, Craig. You guys truly inspire me. I'm trying to get the brakes and paddles down. We have a lot of... Um, tutorials right now about brakes and paddles that are slow-mo and can really help teach that so if you have not seen my tutorial on brakes and paddles yet that you can find on my YouTube site then let me know and I am glad to show some of the slow motion stuff that Craig and I shot that I think will really help you guys um, let's see we have from Mercedes comment of the week says, ah, oh, you are just so adorable and such an awesome hooper, Claire. Any tips on vertical hooping? Claire? Claire, I think you're muted. I would normally like to start in the ground position first, facing down, because that's the easier one for me, and it helps and it helps to hop when you're doing it, versus doing that this motion. So if you're hopping, and to get into it, you can either push it into it, or you can um, just start hop hopping when you're in horizontal, um, like this. So it's sort of hopping while uh, turning your body down. And then once you get into this position here, you can start to turn over into the sky position. And it's the same movement of hopping up and down when you're doing it. Uh, but you're just turn the other way. Um, I find... Uh, ground easier because I'm not like leaning back and feeling like I'm going backwards, which you uh, wouldn't probably wouldn't fall backwards because of the hoop rotation, but uh, it feels like you would. So, hopping, uh, hopping and turning normally helps with that. I'm going to kill this microphone, throw it in the pool. Just kidding. Um, thank you, Claire. Claire, you sound so good tonight. Like, you sound calm. Doesn't she, Bryant? Like, you sound so confident, and you're just like, this is how you do it. Boom. I love it. I, I, I didn't even recognize you. I thought that one of your friends um, was talking at first. And it's funny, and, like, I, I hope that doesn't sound like not a compliment, because it is. Because if you go back and watch one of my first videos, I'm like, hello, hello, hello. And so it's like really weird. And then you see Brian, he's like, hi. Um, my name's Brian. You know, I'm exaggerating. But it's just really cute to see, like, how progress the progression of everyone's work. And you become so confident 
and such you are such a great teacher. Like you are the bomb dot com. I have grown up in the nineties for shizzle. Anywho, um, Mercedes also says, I must ask, what size is your hoop and favorite to float with Audrey? My favorite size hoop is 32 inches, and it's that one that I had right there. This guy. This is an outward spiral hoop. Um, it's, it has um, the goal. I'm hearing an echo, and it really confuses me. I can't do that. Okay, there we go. It has a Velcro. Well, it did. A Velcro in a lining on the inside. And then the other one that I like to use when I'm practicing outside on cement is just a 32 inch black hoop. It's nothing special, nothing crazy, but 32 inches is kind of where I like to play with because it's good with on and off body. And I do a lot of on body work. Um, let's see, Brian, what about you? What's your favorite size and type? Ironically, uh, because I'm, you know, we just think I'd make a bigger hoop because I'm a bit taller than Audrey. But I actually use the same size as Audrey because um, I like the 32 inch hoop a lot. It's like, the, it's my favorite kind of like size because I used to do a 31 and it was a bit small. I actually have it right here. Um, yeah, I used to have a 31 inch, 31 inch, and it's like pretty small. So I like, I wanted something a bit slower, so then I got a 32 inch. And it was a per perfect fit because um, I like a lot of off-body and on-body work, but I don't like big hoops because my room doesn't have the space for it. So that's why I use a lot of um, kind of smaller hoops that like are slightly small, but not that small. Like in my opinion, these aren't that small because I worked with smaller hoops before, and this is actually pretty small, which is like I don't know, two feet, Check it not two feet, um, 24 inches. Yeah, and like so they're like really small. So yeah, pretty much my hoop size choice. Everybody got choices. All right, and what about you, Claire? I'd like to use a thirty-one inch. Like the one here. Thirty-one inch. <laughs> Just kidding. She is shorter than we are, though. <laughs> so. Um, I've been using the 31 um, inch for um, with polypros without tape because uh, I normally practice outside and then all the tape comes off and it's just uncomfortable to hoop with when all the tape just comes off of your hoops. And then uh, with my um, future hoop pro uh, LED hoop, I have it um, from the outer perimeter, it's a 30 and on the inner perimeter um, area is um, 28 for that so I'm sort of 28 through 32 ish because I know one of my hoops I had a 32 and a 34 when I started I had 32 then I went up to 34 and then I went back down <laughs> It sounds like a complicated math equation when we talk about hoop size, I swear. All right, so guys. Um, Audrey, hold on a second. I need to get a screenshot for, for today's show before we move on. No. All right. Can it be like all of us? Can, can we do like something where it's like Claire and then myself and then Brian? I can cobble one together. I'll take them all three separate. Okay. Together. All right. Who's going to go first? You want to hold a hoop? All right. We're doing you first. Um, I can. Okay, hold still. On three. One, two. Got it. Okay, Bryant, you're next. Hold still. All right, one, two, hold still, three. Got it. I think you were moving a little bit, though. Let me check. Um, yeah, we can make that work. And Claire. Okay. One, two, got it. 
Yes, we can make those work. All right. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. I feel bad when I have to mute people. I'm like, all right. Oh, I don't even know what's happening right now. Okay, anyway, so we're going to take one more comment since we did that. Um, let's see, Mercedes said, thank you, I'll work on it. I struggle with vertical hooping the most. Well, I hope that she can help you. That's awesome. Claire's a great teacher. Koofs says, I love you, Audrey. I love you too, Koofs. Um, Kristen Abbott says, we sell Wemo brand hula hoops at five below, so that's what the kids will be using. They're super sturdy and great for kids, and they're only $2. That sounds awesome. I love that. Carlos Ramirez says, twirls can be like flow challenges, i.e. vortex, jump through hoop, iso right hand, etc. Just an idea so I can find my flow starting with yours. That sounded like a math equation that really confused me. Audrey, is hooping your main source of income? I de it definitely looks like it's a passion. I was wondering if you had a website where you can expand into more in-depth tutorials. Um, yes, on the in-depth tutorials, Craig and I have spent a lot of time filming slow motion, very high quality clips, and I will be releasing those soon. In terms of income, it um, I don't feel really comfortable talking about that, but um, I do want to start utilizing the talents of Claire and Bryant and the fans to create shirts and fan art and hoops to help you know help other artists make money and kind of give the hooping community a a nice little income so we can have awesome hoop things. So um, look forward to some cool designs and some in-depth tutorials. Um, all right, guys. So again, if you want to be a part of the Hooping Live team or have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email me at info at hoopinglive.com. You can also ask... Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have a hiccup. I'm sorry. You can also, Brian. You can also email Brian or Claire with the approval of her mother if you have any questions, of course. And um, I will go ahead and let Brian give his information, and then Claire, Brian, go ahead. Well, I thought you said earlier, and you can get my information um, through my Facebook or. Um, Instagram, um, there's two ways, or my YouTube, my YouTube is Brian Dang, my, and my Facebook is also Brian Dang, um, but my main source of contact is Instagram, which is at Dang Bryant, you see what I did there, Brian Dang, Brian Dang, and Dang Bryant, so yeah, but I'm also running the Hooping Live page as well on Instagram, at Hooping Live, so you can contact me there, and I'll, happy to answer your, I'll be happy to answer your questions, and all that fun stuff. Awesome. And Claire? You can find me on YouTube uh, on my channel called Worth Watching. And you can also um, type in Claire Hooping, and a bunch of my videos will come up. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. My microphone literally makes me look weird as heck. I said there, it looks like I'm just like enthralled with something that's non existent to you guys. Okay, so thank you, um, Brian and uh, Bryant, Claire, and Craig for being the awesome sauce that you are. And again, like I said, info at hoopinglive.com. If you want to be a part of the Hooping Live team, you can email us there. And like I said, comments, question, question. Wow. Comments, questions, and concerns, info at hoopinglive.com. We are on all the social medias, just Hooping Live. Twitter, Hooping Live. Facebook.com slash Hooping Live. Instagram, which by the way, Bryant is 
rockin' Hoopin' Live. Um, and you can use the hashtag Hoopin' Live as well. <laughs> it's a cool dance. And, uh, yep, yeah, so, guys, until next week, hopefully we will see you every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time here on hoopinlive.com.